when Social Security benefits were first passed in 1935 and then implemented in 1937, the promise was that this income would not be treated as taxable income for retirees. And it wasn't for 47 years until 1984 and that changed, meaning that for the last 40 years, Social Security income is taxable. Now, the biggest mistake people make when they learn that Social Security income is taxable is they latch on to four taxable percentages, 0%, 35%, 50%, and 85%, thinking that their social security will be taxed at one of these four percentages, and that is not correct. But you will see where those numbers come from as we go through how taxable percentage is calculated. Just know that you could have 0% of your social security income be taxable. You could also have 1% or 2% or any percent up to 85%. I do need to clarify something so this all makes sense moving forward. Percent taxable does not mean that the percentage amount in the form of dollars is taken away from you. It means that the percentage taxable is now counted towards your overall income that is subject to taxes at your marginal tax rate. So if you get $20,000 per year in social security benefits and end up in the 85% taxable scenario, 85% is $17,000. That does not mean that $17,000 are taken away from you and you are left with $3,000. It means that $17,000 counts towards your overall taxable income. And then that $17,000 will be taxed at whichever marginal tax brackets you fall into rather than having your full $20,000 of social security income showing up in your overall taxable income. $3,000 in this scenario is yours and is not even looked at or considered or counted as income to be taxed. Let me show you this chart that will help make everything more simple moving forward. A major definition that we have to understand is provisional income. Your provisional income will determine how much of your social security income is taxable. Provisional income is made up of three buckets. The first bucket is your adjusted gross income. It includes wages, dividends, capital gains, business income, and retirement distributions from things like a pension, 401k, 403b, and any traditional IRAs that you may have. So all of your adjusted gross income goes into bucket number one. The second bucket would be tax exempt interest income. Think of this as municipal bonds. Roth account dollars do not go into this bucket. In fact, Roth dollars do not show up anywhere in this exercise because you already paid taxes on Roth contributions. And the promise with Roth accounts is that they won't be taxed again. Let's hope they keep that one. But all of your tax exempt interest income does go into this bucket. The third and final bucket would be your social security income, but only 50% of your social security income goes into this bucket. Now we're gonna add all three buckets together and you get your provisional income number. And now that will run through two separate calculations. I'll describe those calculations and then we'll run through some examples with real dollar amounts. When looking at these two calculations, know that the amount of your social security subject to tax will be whichever calculation ends up being lower. So that's a good thing for you. The first path your provisional income can take involves two thresholds. For single filers, the first threshold is $25,000 and the second threshold is $34,000. For joint filers, the first threshold is $32,000 and the second threshold is $44,000. Wanna get even more upset at all of this? Those thresholds haven't changed since they were first instituted in 1984. They haven't been adjusted for inflation in 40 years. At just a 3% annual inflation, that first single threshold of $25,000 would start at $84,500, and the first for joint filers would be almost $111,000. I don't like this, but they don't care what I think, and this video is not about what ifs, it is about what is. Let's look at our calculations. I'm going to use joint filers for all of the examples, but you can download this spreadsheet using the link in the description and play with the numbers yourself if you'd like. Okay, if your joint provisional income number is higher than the first threshold of $32,000, then 50% of every dollar above the first threshold becomes taxable. 35% of any dollars over the second threshold of $44,000 are also taxable. Adding the threshold one number to the threshold two number gives you a dollar amount of your social security income that is taxable. Or we look at calculation number two. Calculation number two is much more straightforward and it is just 85% of your total social security income. Remember how we said that up to 85% of your social security benefits may be taxed? That's why calculation number two exists. It is 85% of your social security benefit and the maximum taxable amount at the moment. You will see that there are instances where 85%, meaning calculation two, is actually lower than calculation one, and therefore 85% would be used. 
okay, let's play with some real numbers to see what our provisional income would be and then run them through these calculations. The first scenario is when social security income is your only source of income. The second scenario will be a mix of social security income and other income. And then the third and final scenario will be a higher income couple. So number one, social security is your only income source. Today in 2024, the average social security check is right around $1,700 per person per month. I'm going to use $2,000 per month just for even easy math. Let's pretend that you and a spouse both bring that amount in for a total of $4,000 a month or $48,000 per year. Your provisional income is made up of $0 from adjusted gross income bucket number one because you aren't taking any other income, plus $0 from bucket number two because you don't have any tax exempt interest income, plus 50% of your social security income, so $24,000 in this case. Now let's send that through our two calculations. Well, the first one is easy because $24,000 does not meet either of the thresholds, so that amount is zero. The second one is 85% of your total social security benefit of $48,000, which ends up being $40,800. But remember, you will be taxed on the lower of the two calculations, which in this case is calculation number one of $0. So 0% of your social security income will be taxed in this situation. Yes. Now, before I go over the last two examples, 91% of you who watch our videos have not subscribed to our channel. If you've ever enjoyed one of our videos, could you do me a favor and hit the subscribe button? It helps this channel more than you know, and it helps us continue putting out helpful videos like this one. Okay, that's your only homework from this. Let's move on to scenario number two. We'll keep your social security income at the same $48,000, but this time you have some income from retirement sources. Let's say that you take another $1,000 a month from your 401k, so $12,000 per year, and you take $100 a month or $1,200 per year, from your municipal bond tax exempt interest income. Your provisional income number is $37,200 as the provisional income number to run through our calculations. $37,200 exceeds that first threshold of $32,000 by $5,200, but it doesn't exceed the second threshold of $44,000. So take that $5,200 of excess money above threshold number one, multiply it by 50%, and that gives us $2,600 as the taxable amount of social security using calculation number one. That is 5% of your social security income, which is much less than 85% of calculation number two, so we use calculation number one. To repeat what we mentioned at the beginning of this video, this $2,600 number is not dollars taken away from your social security income, it is the amount of money taxable at whatever your income tax bracket is only $2,600 of your social security income is added to your adjusted gross income rather than the full $48,000 of social security income. That AGI number plus this taxable amount of social security is the number that you would use to run through the marginal tax brackets to calculate your total federal tax. Okay, let's do one more example with higher income earners to see how things change. In this last scenario, let's keep the social security benefit at $48,000 for the couple, but they take $60,000 out of retirement accounts over the course of the year and add another $10,000 in tax exempt interest income, giving us a total of $94,000 is the provisional income number to run through our calculations. $94,000 is higher than both of the calculation one thresholds, so we can finally see that number. $94,000 is $62,000 higher than the $32,000 threshold one, meaning we take 50% of $62,000 and that becomes threshold box number one, $31,000 plus $94,000 is $50,000 higher than threshold number two of $44,000, meaning we take 35% of the $50,000 excess and put it in threshold box number two, $17,500. Add box number one and box number two together and we get $48,500 in taxable social security income. But wait a minute, that number is higher than our total social security benefit. So that means that we will take a look at the lower calculation number two, which is 85% of our social security income. That dollar amount is $40,800. Again, this is not the money that you owe. This is the amount added to your adjusted gross income that will get you to your total taxable income at whatever marginal tax rate you fall in. So we saw a scenario where 0% of your social security is taxable, 5% of your social security income is taxable, and 85% of your social security income is taxable. You can see where the myth of standard percentages of zero, 35, 50, and 85% come from, but now you also know that that is a myth and that is not reality. Please note that these are federal taxes. There are nine states that also tax social security income in different ways. They are Colorado, Connecticut, Kansas, Minnesota, Montana, New Mexico, Rhode Island, 
Utah, and Vermont. I happen to live in one of those states, and they each have their own rules. So I can't go over all of those here, but just know that there's more to the story if you live in one of those nine states. Messing with that provisional income number can get you any percentage between zero and 85%. And this is where I have two plugs for what we do. Number one, for those who are subscribers and have seen our other videos, you know my friend Zach, who is the president of Capita Financial Network, and he's a financial whiz. He and I sat down to dive into this topic in even more detail and how you can control your income levels to avoid the tax torpedo that can hurt your retirement income and your social security income. Your retirement strategies, including when and from what accounts to take income from during retirement has consequences on your social security taxability. The second plug is if you are looking for help trying to figure out your retirement strategies as they relate to social security, tax strategies to maximize your benefit and minimize your tax obligation, or just plan for the future, you can shoot me an email and we can help. My email is in the description of this video along with the spreadsheet that we used. For most, social security income is and should be the foundation for your retirement and your other income sources are built off of that foundation. We are not CPAs, so we don't file your taxes or do your taxes for you, but we have financial advisors as part of 90 Days from Retirement that help with social security strategies that will involve how taxes come into play, financial planning, and wealth management. We do not charge for social security help. This is one of many videos that we have on social security, but YouTube thinks you'll really like this video right here, and I agree. Thank you for spending some time with me, and I will see you right over there.